right, watch fans. I got another one. Again, uh, sorry for my videos not being as frequent as I expect them to be. Still a lot going on. I'm trying to knock some of them out today. So I'll probably try and post two throughout the week. I'll schedule them. Um, but uh, once I've finished my move and I've unpacked, I will start to do quite a few more videos. This is another one from Watch Gang. Uh, uh, I don't know what this is. Total surprise to me. But I'll tell you what. It's kind of heavy. You know what? It's interesting. Let's just show. I want you to see how heavy this 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 case and box is. I don't know what to expect, so let's just see. Almost 300 grams. So, all right, let's see. Armatron. Wow, really? I haven't had an Armatron in forever. Oh, look at this thing. This thing is awesome. What in the world? That is super cool. Gosh, Armatron is from, like, back in the day. Oh, it's... Why is it not... All right, let's focus. All right, I don't know what to do. Let me see. There we go, okay. Armatron Solar. <laughs> All right, I don't know why my camera's not focusing, but... uh all right, let's see if I can find a video about Armatron. Um, otherwise, you'll come right back here and we'll start discussing the watch. All right, thanks. At Yankee Stadium, there is a sign that says Armatron. If you've ever been there for a game, you might hear someone say, what's an Armatron? To answer that, we have to go back to 1927. Eugene Gluck is born in Romania, right there. Everyone calls him Mr. Gluck. He walked into a room, the room lights up. He, everybody knew something was special about him. Mr. Gluck was an exceptionally smart kid. He was a genius. He would read voraciously ancient Jewish books of wisdom. He's the wisest person I've ever met. He soaked up every bit of wisdom he could, which was good because he was going to need it. The year is 1942, and it is not a good time to be Jewish in Europe. His dreams would have to be put on hold. His whole family was brought here, and he was the only one to survive the first few hours. They made him dig. This gave him time to think, a lot. And one day he looked up and saw a young, powerful soldier. That is when he made a promise. I am going to survive this, and I am going to show you how human beings are supposed to treat each other. And he survived. The war ended, he was free. And the first thing he did was fall in love with her, Jean. Okay, Jean and Eugene, that's adorable. <laughs> it's 1949, they get married and come to America. As his family grew, so did his ambitions. He felt he had to move on from there. It's 1956, Mr. Gluck knows almost nothing about watches, so he decides to become a watchmaker. He wanted to make excellent watches that normal people could afford. He flies to Switzerland, learns everything he can, with the help of some engineers, starts making watches. Armatron is born. Then the 1970s happened. It felt like the future. Computers, men had been on the moon, and sideburns were everywhere. So Armatron got in on the future by creating one of the first LED watches. They sold millions. It was a big deal for Armatron. And that's when the disaster happened. All the watches stopped. As people started returning watches, Mr. Gluck knew there was only one thing to do, pay back every penny, despite it leading Armatron to the edge of bankruptcy. Then the 80s happened. Armatron bounced back to lead the way with new and improved digital watches. These ones worked. This is when things really exploded. Bugs Bunny, Garfield, Monopoly clock, so many colors, so many styles. This isn't even a clock, just kidding, it is. Commercials, magazines, celebrity endorsements, this was the birth of the fashion watch. Armatron was back. All right, guys. I apologize for uh, the earlier video where this was uh, really uh, foggy and unclear. I'm not really sure what my camera's doing, but it just did not want to focus. Uh, but it seems to be doing it now, so we're good. Uh, just as a recap on some of the things, I'm uh, changing jobs. Um, same, same company, but I'm moving to another state, just bought a house, just sold a house, uh, in the process of selling a house and starting a law degree. Um, 
So this will be the official last video that I will make um, before I build my next workshop. Uh, last watch review. I'll make a couple more videos, but uh, I won't have a workshop, so they're gonna be uh, different things, but um, watch related, of course. But uh, expect me to go back to normal in probably a month and a half, two months, because I gotta get the materials, gotta build a workshop uh, and get started again. So, but I'm um, looking forward to it. I'm excited. So this watch um, by Armatron is uh, another watch gang purchase. Uh, I just like their wheels sometimes because there's a lot of interesting watches on there. Um, and it kind of just presents me with different watches. So I kind of get a kick out of it. You notice it's not working. That's because the crown is disengaged. So I'll push that in you can see it. You know what? Let me set the time because I've got the atomic clock right here. I mean, not the atomic clock, but one that reads from it. It is the 20th. Make sure. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Perfect. Okay, and it's 10 20. All right, so. This watch is pretty cool. And I will tell you, I got it from Watch Gang Tier 1 on, like, Tier 1 of Tier 1. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to word it, but it was, uh, um, like, they're super cheap Tier 1 watches. Um, they, <laughs> this watch, I think, total, in terms of points, probably cost me about $20. Um, I'll have to get that off. And as you can tell... Uh, it is solar if it didn't if you didn't see that on the little sign there uh, which is kind of cool because as you know um, some of the watches let me find it I've got one here so, oh no I took it away citizen has a lot of really cool solar watches their eco drive which I'm a huge fan of the eco drive watches are really really something else like I, I would say there's a lot of watches that I really like but if I was stranded on um, on an island, right? Like I suppose if I was the last human being on earth or something, or I needed to repopulate the earth or I, I got, I don't know what, um, I would probably have the Ingersoll that's got like the entire uh, clock and moon phase and time and year up to like 2060 or something. Uh, but if I was just stranded on, on an island and I wanna know what time it was, and I was probably gonna be there for a few years, <laughs> you know, an eco drive would have been something that I'd want. Um, because it's solar, so you're never going to run out of power. It's never going to be an issue. You could have a mechanical watch too, right? But, you know, if I was getting lazy one day, there you go. Unless I bury this in the sand or something, it's still going to keep time. So you can see the solar cell. I'll try and zoom in as close as I can without distracting. But you can see the solar cell in the center. They don't bother to hide it. Uh, the the, the EcoDrive ones, they usually do a little bit better job of hiding it or they try to hide it. Uh, this uses the AS32A Epson movement, which I believe is um, Epson Miota, Seiko Miota. Oh, I can't remember. No, that's that's a, that's unfortunate. I usually know better. I think it's a, I think it's I think it's Miota. Um, but you know, it's it's basically a ladies' watch movement. I'll put pictures up of here so you can see it. Uh, the movement itself does not expand beyond the date wheel. There, as a matter of fact, I think the date wheel might actually be larger than the movement itself. Um, but the actual case you can see, um, and it has a rechargeable battery, so it works pretty well. If you ever get a watch and it's just not taking in its solar, you need to leave it in the sun. I actually recommend pulling out the crown and then leave it in the sun, uh, like on your windowsill for an entire day. And then you should be good. Uh, these will typically last anywhere from four to six months uh, without any charge. So I don't know if you were in Alaska and you had like a sudden black, you know, what is it like the sun doesn't come up for like four months this would be perfect you just <laughs> leave it out for the day um but that's what happened to this one uh when i got it, it it was totally dead and so i had to leave it out for a bit it works well now again it is a very cheap watch you see it is stamped um you know what can i say it's got a very janky bracelet they're hollow links which i cannot stand uh, if I was going to, I mean, I guess I am going to keep this watch because it's so cheap that I probably can't resell it. 
unless anybody in <laughs> watching wants it. Um, I might change out the brand with something a little bit nicer like this, which I think would kind of be kind of cool. Uh, it is a very huge face, and we'll go into the measurements in a bit. But first, I want to talk about the company. Armatron is owned by uh, E. Glock. Now, this uh, gentleman uh, has a very interesting history. <clears throat> he, uh, and, and I'll put, put the, the video just so you can see up there. I played a little bit of it earlier. He escaped um, uh, the Holocaust and decided that he, I think he moved to New York, and he wanted to create um, a watch company, among other things. Uh, had a couple of failed businesses, but this one took, and Arbitron is one of those companies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, unfortunately, now um, Armatron's made in China. Um, I only say that because I'd much rather be made in the U.S., but it is what it is. Uh, they're kind of cheap, right? This isn't necessarily a, a quality watch. But for $20, you just really can't go wrong. Uh, it's not bad looking. It's actually quite nice. It's stainless steel. Nothing fancy, not 316th by any means. It's just a normal mineral crystal. Uh, it's not... Uh, uh, not anything too spectacular, no uh, sapphire coating, but of course, what do you expect for 20 bucks? Um, so I guess we'll just get right into it. We're going to start doing the measurements. Case is pretty massive. I'm going to say it's like 45, 46. Yep, 46 millimeter. Okay, the lug, I'm going to say about 22. Yep, about 22. Uh, depth not too big. Um, this case is much larger than it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to say probably about 13. 12, not even 12 and a half. So 12.3. Um, and lug to lug, because I know you guys would like to see that from now on. So, it's quite big. About 47. Alright, and let's look at the weight. It's really not that heavy, despite its size. It's actually quite light. <clears throat> but that's just because the uh, links are hollow. So 156.9 grams. So there's not much to it. And we'll do the loom. Uh, what am I doing? I forgot my flashlight. Don't know where it is. There it is. Okay. All right. Pretty standard. Don't even have the second hand, but is what it is. I don't. You don't expect much for twenty bucks, so it's pretty decent. <clears throat> All honesty, there. Um, let's see. I have seven and a half inch wrists. It's actually sized quite well for me, so I don't even need to do anything. Um, this is how it came. I have not sized it. It's literally out of the box. It's actually not bad. I think the most I would do would be to adjust this, maybe move it in one or two because there's a little bit of slack here, but some people prefer it like this. It's not bad. I mean, it really, really isn't too bad. It's got a nice tachyometer. Um, I don't really know how much you would really want to use that, but I can literally just wear this as is. So, all right. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, please subscribe. And, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. My next uh, couple of videos, I'm going to do one of my workshop before I leave it. And uh, it'll be the last time I do a video from this workshop. So it'll be a little bit of a sad mo uh, moment. But I wanted you guys all to see where I've been doing my videos from. Um, and kind of what I expect to build and turn into my next workshop. So I got a house with a detached free car garage. So I plan to turn half of one of the bays into a workshop. So I just need to move 220 in there. Uh, and then the video following that will actually be a book review for uh, a watch. I'm very excited about it. I was given a free copy of it. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Highly recommend it. Uh, <clears throat> I won't go too much into it, but for those of you who are looking to get into watch repair or just want to learn more about mechanical watches and, and uh, everything about them, Highly recommend it, but stay tuned for that. All right, thank you very much.